God cannot allow the fulfillment of his promises in our lives until he has developed unwavering faith within us. And he cannot develop that rock-solid faith until our feelings become utterly unreliable. In these last days, God is raising and equipping a remarkable group of men and women to embody his kingdom's purpose across every corner of the earth and in every aspect of human life. These chosen ones are being summoned to influence not just the ministry, but also the educational sector, the business world, and every other sphere of society. Yet, this divine calling isn't for just anyone. Those who will be used by God in such profound ways must possess specific qualities and undergo particular trials to prove their readiness and worthiness. In this video, we will uncover three crucial tests that every chosen one must pass before being mightily used by God in these last days. Prepare yourselves, beloved, because these tests are not for the faint-hearted. They will stretch you, challenge you, and push you to the limits of your faith and obedience. I urge you not to skip any part of this message, as understanding these tests will help you identify what season you're in, so you don't prematurely move forward before your training is complete. God's calling on your life is too significant to rush through the process. He wants to equip you fully, leaving no stone unturned in your preparation. Test 1. The Test of Faith The first crucial test every chosen one must pass is the test of faith. This test is about maintaining unwavering faith even when the ground beneath you seems to crumble. When everything around you is falling apart, how do you keep believing and hold on to your trust in God's plan and purposes? There will be seasons when all circumstances seem to contradict his promises. It is in these times that God builds a rock-solid faith in us. He will stretch you beyond your mental limits, beyond what your mind can comprehend, and beyond your comfort zone to launch you into a dimension where your life will not be built on what you can see, feel, or hear. Rather, your life will be built solely on His Word. During tough times, it's crucial to remember that God is always with us, not just when things are going well. Sometimes it feels like he's distant, especially when we're struggling, but that doesn't mean he has left us. In these moments, you might hear doubts whispering that God has forgotten you, but actually God is watching to see if you trust his words over those doubts. God uses these hard times to help us grow. He wants us to rely not on our feelings, but on his word, no matter what's going on in our lives, whether it's trouble with our health, our family, or our jobs. It's not easy to trust God when everything seems to be falling apart, but this is exactly what God calls us to do. He wants us to be believers whose faith stands strong, not because our lives are perfect, but because we believe in his promises. When you face challenges, keep trusting God's word. Stand firm in your faith. This is what it means to be a strong believer in tough times. You see, God cannot allow the fulfillment of his promises in our lives until he has developed unwavering faith within us. And he cannot develop that rock-solid faith until our feelings become utterly unreliable. It is in this season that God trains us to live by his words and not by our feelings. 
to see things from the perspective of his word rather than life's circumstances and to see God in every situation, even when we don't feel his presence. James 1, 2, 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. These verses remind us that trials and tests are inevitable on our journey of faith, but they also serve a greater purpose to produce perseverance and spiritual maturity within us. It's easy to trust God when everything is going well, but true faith is forged in the fires of adversity. Every challenge you face serves one main purpose, to strengthen your faith. When God tests you, it's not to break you down. I know it can be really tough when it feels like the promises God made to you aren't coming to life yet. These moments are challenging, but remember, God is stretching your faith. He's building it up like a master builder, laying bricks for a strong house. He's molding your faith into something so solid that nothing can shake it, not even the devil. This is because pleasing God is all about having strong faith. So in these last days, expect God to stretch you. He will take you beyond what's comfortable to a place where your entire life is founded on his word built by it, on it, and for it. Here's the key. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Even when everything around you is uncertain, he remains the solid ground beneath your feet. Hold tightly to his promises. Gather with fellow believers who lift you up and continue to praise God, no matter the storm. Stay immersed in his word. Speak it, believe it, pray it. As you do, your faith will be revitalized and empowered. Beloved, if you're going through a season of testing right now, don't lose heart. This is part of the refining process God is using to shape you into a chosen one, fit for his service. Stay strong, keep believing, and you will emerge from this trial with a faith that cannot be shaken. Test 2. The Test of Time and Patience One of the biggest tests God puts us through is the test of time and patience. Why does the Lord allow these drawn-out delays to develop the essential virtue of patience within us? After the fall in the Garden of Eden, humanity became conditioned to live life independent from God rather than fully dependent on Him as originally designed. Our inherent nature became one of selfishness. This is why God tests our ability to patiently wait on Him before we act. Consider the story of Joseph he spent many years unjustly in prison until he finally learned that his gifting didn't originate from himself, but from God alone. For God to truly use us in these last days, he will test if you can be patient enough to see his word come to pass in your life on his timing, not your own. He will test your ability to wait on him. What God is trying to instill is the realization that you cannot operate in the purposes he has for you through your own strength, resources, or timetable. He wants you to learn to fully depend on him and his perfect timing. Before God anoints you 
or utilizes you for a significant purpose, he often puts you through testing seasons. He may grant you glimpses of your future destiny, such as healing others, addressing large crowds, or leading a global enterprise. However, these revelations don't instantly materialize. Instead, God subjects you to the test of time to evaluate the authenticity of your faith and devotion. Take Abraham, for example. God promised to make him the father of many nations, yet it took 25 long years for that promise to be fulfilled. When God makes you wait, it's a divine process with profound purposes. He is testing your patience to see if your heart's desires align with His will. Are you willing to wait for His timing instead of demanding instant fulfillment? He's also examining if your devotion surpasses all other ambitions. If you are to be used mightily by God as part of His end times army, He must test your ability to depend fully on Him, not yourself. Embrace these seasons of waiting as opportunities to grow in persevering patience, the same quality that allowed Joseph to endure 13 grueling years and finally step into his prophetic destiny. As you wait faithfully, never forget that God is working behind the scenes and his timing is perfect. Even long-awaited prophecies can manifest suddenly because our God can compress a thousand days into one. Your prayers, service, and devotion during the wait are not in vain. Stay faithful, for this test of patience equips you to be an unstoppable force in God's last day's army. Test 3. Rejection for Righteousness in today's society, where the pursuit of righteousness, holiness, and morality often seems outdated, the third test every chosen one faces becomes critical. Despite shifting societal norms and values, one truth remains unchanged. God's demand, I, for holiness and righteousness from his followers, our modern culture not only tolerates but often promotes activities like fornication, masturbation, and the consumption of pornography. Things that were once kept private, but are now mainstream, even appearing on our TV screens. This widespread acceptance makes it a formidable test to uphold God's standards in a world that has largely abandoned them. If you find yourself blending in with the crowd in sinful behaviors, it's time to reevaluate your readiness to be used by God. In these crucial times, the price of being chosen often includes rejection. This test, rejection for righteousness, means you might be misunderstood, sidelined, or even opposed because of your commitment to God's standards. Living differently from the people of this age doesn't mean rejecting or ending friendships, but it does mean maintaining God's standards. Whether it's losing a job to uphold your faith or letting go of a relationship that doesn't align with God's values, the cost can be high. What the world considers good and normal you must weigh against the scriptures. If it doesn't uphold God's standards, you have to let it go, even if it means facing rejection. By making these sacrifices, you are being transformed into a mighty person in the spirit. Upholding God's standards, despite societal pressures, and shaping yourself into someone who can be mightily used by him, Scripture is filled with examples of those who faced rejection due to their faithfulness. 
Joseph was sold into slavery by his own brothers out of jealousy for his divine destiny. The prophet Jeremiah faced mockery and physical abuse for proclaiming God's truths. And our Savior Jesus was ultimately rejected and crucified by the very people he came to save. If you face mockery, persecution, or rejection for your faith, understand that you are in good company. In John 15, 18, Jesus said, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. As you walk in righteousness, you may find that you no longer fit into the mold of those around you. Your choices, values, and actions might seem peculiar to them. But remember, God has set you apart for a higher purpose. While the world may ostracize you, God's approval is the only validation you need. Embrace this season of rejection, for it is refining you and affirming your alignment with God's kingdom. Conclusion, beloved, as you journey through these tests of faith, patience, righteousness, and the wilderness, remember that each trial is a divine opportunity for growth and preparation. God is meticulously shaping you into a vessel of honor, fit for his purposes in these last days. Do not rush the process. Embrace each season with trust, knowing that God is working all things together for your good and his glory. If you find encouragement and strength in this message, I invite you to subscribe, share, and leave your thoughts in the comments. Your journey is significant, and together we can support and uplift one another as we walk this path of divine preparation. Remember, you are chosen for such a time as this. Stay strong, stay faithful, and watch as God unfolds his extraordinary plans for your life.